Hi everybody, my name is John Alexis Guerra Gomez and I'm going to talk a little bit about information visualization, my research topic and how it is being used to uh, understand uh, different types of data. So to start, let's think about what's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning. Well, the first thing I do is go and check on Facebook, see what's happening there. So you have a bunch of information for that day and the next day, the first thing you do is check Facebook and the next day you check Facebook again and the next day you check Facebook again. So then you have, you keep on doing that and you have the whole week of information and you keep on saying, well, that's adding a lot of information. But if you look at the month, then you keep on adding more information. And then if you look at the year, uh, the whole year of Facebook, that's a whole lot of data. And that's just looking at one uh, um, year of Facebook data. So the question is, that's a lot of information. It's complicated just to make sense about all of that. Uh, are we interpreting everything properly? What can we do to, to make sense of that? Well, the answer is quite simple. Just use your eyes. You might be asking, what the heck? Why are you saying that? Well, let me show you an example. Let's say my Facebook friends. Well, I have a bunch of them. Actually, I have 743 friends. <coughs> well, of those friends, the question is, can we use those connections they have just to see, say something about my life, to just to tell my story? And the answer is yes, with information visualization. So let me show you a quite interesting uh, info viz of my friends in here. So what you're seeing, it's a network visualization in which each one of those spheres represents one person, one of my friends in Facebook, and the edges between them represents the friendship connections. The size of each one of them, circles or the friends represent the between the centrality metric that it's basically just how important is that person to connect the different networks and the color is representing different clusters and that's the first thing you notice when you look at this if you look uh, the first thing is that this group in here represents all includes all the friends classmates and students and co-workers that i had when i was in colombia and some friendships that i met from there you can see that Maria Fernanda, my wife, she's the biggest circle in the whole network. The reason for that is because she is the most highly connected person in the network. Then you can identify other people like Felipe, my um, um, co-founder, as well as Jose Jaramillo and some other very in important friends because of their connections in there. We go forward to the next cluster, you find my entrepreneurial friends. These are people that I have met because of my company along different travels. And you can see, for instance, that Isabel Alvarez, that is one of the uh, persons that works in, in this world, it's connecting most of them. Then going next, you have the Fulbright friends. And in there, you have two interesting clusters. This one, light green in here, represents the Fulbright people I met in Ohio when I first came to the US in the introductory seminar for for the country and then i met some quite good friends that i keep in contact with through facebook then on the right you have the fulbright s and t's and in here you also have two clusters these are the people that are uh, around in my same class in in the the, the fulbright s and t's and then these are the other the older s and t's that are for more recent years it's interesting in here for instance that pablo he is both a uh, Fulbright s and but I met him first in Fulbright, Ohio. And because of that, he's actually been identified as, as one of the, as part of this cluster. And he's very important because he's a connection between all the people I have in here and the people in Fulbright s &T. And then also Priscilla, she's a connection I have from Fulbright, Ohio, but she's actually connected to my cluster in the, uh, of my home uh, uh, friends. And also with the next cluster, that it's my the people I have met during the PhD here in Maryland. Here, as you can see, Chris, that is one of my co-workers uh, that is just recently graduated, that is connecting with some of my Fulbrighters and some of my professional co-workers. Now, for my Maryland friends, people I have met in here, you can see my best friend, Carolina Osorio, that she's actually connecting, uh, highly connecting with some of my friends again in my home country, and then with some other friends in my high school, that is the next cluster. You can also see some other friends like Fernando and Camilo and Juan Carlos, that is Carolina's husband. So in the high school cluster and the final cluster that is high school and family, you see my two uh, brothers, Elizabeth, my sister, and Edwin, my brother. And they are highly connected with my family, that is this area in here, Elizabeth especially. 
And then Edwin is also connected to that cluster, but he has higher connections with my high school friends. And because of that, he's getting higher representation in here. So going again to the overall picture, you can see that it's actually telling a lot of information about my life. And you can actually uh, identify some quite important people that if you want to connect, uh, you should be taking attention to. So for instance, Geruti in here, it's an important connection between the entrepreneurs and the home friends and so on and so forth. So the thing in here is that the graph is telling the story. There's a lot of information you can extract from that. And it's quite easy for you just by looking at it to identify what are the things that are happening in there. But, and then the problem is that as this is just my Facebook friends, but we are keeping on generating and generating and generating more data. And every time the society is facing bigger and bigger and bigger problems. The good thing is that information visualization helps. And the proof of that, I have tons of examples and demos in which I can show you how is this helping now and how in the future, by 2020, people can start using InfoVis to actually make sense of their daily life data. However, since I don't have time, I can explain all of this. But if you vote for me, I will promise to go to show many of these examples and demos. And with that, I will go with my take on message that is just visualize your data and then you will be able to uh, start understanding and make sense of that. And thank you very much.